You volunteer at a local animal shelter. The animal shelter knows that you're an Adobe Captivate expert. They've asked you to build an e-learning course for families who wish to adopt a new pet. You decide to make it easy on yourself by repurposing slides from one of the Quick Start projects. In this case, you select a slide from the Aspire project, a slide from the League project that already includes some advanced actions for a click to reveal, and another slide from the League project that has an excellent layout for half a dozen separate objects. First things first, we have a welcome slide with a brief explanation for the training course and our dog model Blaze. Thanks to the Quick Start projects, this is easy to set up and make it mobile ready. On the next slide, we'll customize the click to reveal with our content. We'll replace the default icons and update the images to tell the story of the Hendersons who are thinking about adopting Blaze. On the slide after that, we could use any knowledge check slides like the ones you find in the Quick Start projects or ones built into Adobe Captivate. But let's make some small changes to the very same click to reveal to change it into a multiple choice knowledge check. After all, most of the elements are mostly the same. Once the learner demonstrates their knowledge on the previous knowledge check, they will arrive at the Adoption Center. From here, they can use the drag and drop to select a new member of their family. By dragging the names of the pets up to the stage, they will see a preview photo and description of their selection. They can click Select to have Captivate remember that selection and move on to the final slide. On the final slide, it will confirm their new pet and congratulate them on making a great choice. On this slide, there'll be instructions on where to go and how much the adoption fee will be. Okay, so here's how we build the dog adoption uh, interaction here. We're gonna start with a responsive design project and we're gonna click on Create. First thing we're gonna do is click on the Assets icon in your Captivate toolbar and we're looking for a ready to go slide from one of the quick start projects called instructions and it's from the aspire quick start project so we'll select that and insert that into our project we'll actually need two of these slides so i'm going to hit Control d on my keyboard to duplicate it and then i'm going to select this blank slide one and delete it let's click the assets button on the toolbar yet again now we're looking for an icon click to learn interaction from the league project. We'll insert that slide into our project and we'll also do a search for a knowledge check and I have one in mind. It's actually from the Alliance responsive project. I like it because it's an entirely custom knowledge check slide and it includes some advanced actions if you're interested in learning about advanced actions. So we'll insert that as well. And the last slide we're going to need is a menu slide, but we're not going to use it as a menu slide. It's actually going to be our selection drag and drop slide, but we'll go ahead and insert that in place here. Okay, so now we'll start to customize slide number one. First thing we want to do is replace the text that's on this slide right now with some instructions for our project here. So we're going to copy and paste that text in here. And rather than having a slide title, I'm actually going to bring in the logo for the adoption for pets. I'm just going to delete the placeholder for that. It's a SVG, so it's a nice, beautiful vector graphics. I'm going to drag it from my desktop directly into this slide here. And now I'm going to drag it into the particular fluid box that I'm looking to place it in as well. The other thing I need on this uh, portion of the slide is a begin button. So we're going to start by selecting a rectangle and drawing a rectangle on the slide. We're going to make sure that it's locked into our second of the two fluid boxes. I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio and select use as a button so that it does perform the actions that we needed to perform which in this case will be go to next slide i like to also check hand cursor and disable click sound as well i'm going to add the text begin and uh, i have a particular style for this project in mind i've already created a gradient effect that i'm going to be using so i'm going to select that 
I'm also going to select a dark green outline around the button itself. Let's center that text on the slide and get rid of any unnecessary margins. In this case here, I'm just going to set everything at five pixels. I'm going to resize this begin button because I don't quite need it to be so large. Of course, you can do the same with your text area there so that the logo is appropriately sized. That looks pretty good here. Now let's change the actual background for the right hand fluid box. Again, we're going to use that same gradient. So I'm going to select gradient fill and choose it from here. And last but not least, let's choose our main character that for the story that's uh, explained throughout this little project here. And that's going to be our friend Blaze. This is actually a background image in the fluid box, so I can literally drag my image of Blaze into this fluid box and it will take over that particular fluid box. So that looks pretty good. Let's just double check and make sure everything looks the way we'd want it to for other size devices as well. Perfect. Slide number two is our icon click and learn interaction. And actually what you're seeing here is essentially an overlay that only gets shown when the learner clicks on one of the icons that's on the display here. Now I'm going to change this a little bit. I actually need four icons and I've created some icons of my own, but I'm also going to redesign this slide so that it matches the look and feel of what we've already done on slide number one. So first things first, let's delete the content that's up here. I'm going to need to delete and then press delete again to get rid of the placeholder again for this content as well. So the first thing we're going to do is select the parent fluid box and change this from an image background to our gradient fill that we've used once already. Next, we're going to select the top fluid box and we're going to change the background of that fluid box from its current solid fill over to an image fill. And we already have a picture of the Henderson family, a family that's considering adopting our dog Blaze. So we're going to bring in that image. Here they are. Now in this bottom fluid box, we're going to add a smart shape. I'm going to turn off maintain aspect ratio and I'm going to make it completely transparent and add some instructions for our learners to see. I'm also going to go to the previous slide and take a copy of our begin button because I'm going to need a continue button on this slide just after those instructions there. Let's change the content flow of this particular fluid box to vertical and let's add a little padding around both the text and the button here. And I'm also going to resize the text area so that the begin button is much smaller. Now I don't want to delete my existing icons at this point, but I am going to import in my SVGs that I have and I plan on using for the four icons that the Hendersons need to consider before adopting Blaze. Now I'm going to select all of the icons that I have in this particular fluid box here and I'm going to check use as button because I want the users to click on these. Now the original three icons would change the state of our icon click and learn pop-up but as you can see there's only three of them and we have four so we're going to need to modify it so let's select the grouped object that is our overlay and then click again to select just the text within the pop-up. Let's select state view so we can see all of the multiple states. So normal is going to be cost associated with owning a pet. Pop-up 2 will talk about exercise. Pop-up 3 will talk about training and we'll paste that text in there and this last one I'm going to right click and duplicate state and call this pop-up 4 and I'm going to paste in that content as well. I can go ahead and exit the state now and we can once again hide the icon click and learn pop-up from view. 
first let's select the financial SVG icon that we have here. Go to the Actions tab. I'm going to select Hand Cursor and Disable Click Sound. And instead of Go to Next Slide, which is the default action, we're going to change that to Execute Advanced Actions. And we're going to choose Icon Click and Learn 1, Button 1. Let's edit that advanced action. I don't actually need it to disable the buttons here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those lines. We're going to show the icon click and learn pop up and we're going to show pop up text. So that's perfectly fine here for the first button. I'm going to update the action, click OK and click close. Next I'll select the training icon and we'll execute advanced actions for that. This will be pop-up number two or button two. Let's edit that. So it's going to show the pop-up text, but it's also going to change the state of pop-up text one to pop-up two, which is exactly what we want. And we're going to show icon click and learn pop-up one. And again, we don't need these disable buttons here. So I'm going to delete those, update the action, and close. Similarly, I'm going to set up uh, execute advanced action off of the exercise icon, which is button three. And we'll also change that advanced action. We'll get rid of the disable commands and we'll update that action. And for the final action, we're going to execute advanced action, but we're going to need a whole new advanced action. But rather than writing it from scratch, I'm going to start with button three and make some changes to a duplicate of that action, that advanced action that we have here. So let's duplicate it, give it an updated name. In this case, icon click and learn one button four. And we'll change the state, everything else will remain the same, to pop up for the newly created state that we created ourselves. We'll update that action, click OK, click Close. Now we can safely delete the original icons that were there. I'm going to change the horizontal align to space around just to give the buttons a little more space. We're also going to change the padding to... 20 pixels, horizontal and vertical. So in the grouped object icon click and learn pop-up, you'll notice that there is a small close icon in the upper right hand corner. And there is an advanced action associated with that. You're going to need to make one small change to it. There will be three references to enabling the buttons that are no longer there. They automatically get replaced with continue commands. You're going to want to make sure you delete those if you want the interaction to work properly. Just update the action, click OK, and click Close. One final thing I'm going to do with the image of the Hendersons is I'm going to make sure that it's centered uh, at the top so that uh, we always see Blaze in the shot of the Henderson family. Let's just do a quick little preview with responsive design to see how this looks like across different size devices. I think that looks pretty good. Slide number three is relatively easy to update here. Let's start with this background fluid box here. In this case, we're going to go ahead and change that from an image fill to our gradient fill that we've used throughout this project. Starting on the left, this particular knowledge check title is a multi-state object. It not only contains the title of this particular slide, but when you go into state view, it also provides your overarching feedback, correct or incorrect. I'm going to customize this with my own title and message. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that into this particular object and we'll change the correct caption to something a little simpler. And instead of saying not quite, I'm going to have this message be to try again. Let's exit the multi-state object. Take a look at the question stem here. I'm going to paste in the text that I wanted to say. And for the correct feedback, I have some text already prepared for that. And for the incorrect message, 
Again, I've got some other text ready for that as well. We can go ahead and exit the state now for this object. For this next group of fluid boxes, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the background fill and allow my gradient to simply show through. And we're going to select each of these buttons. Using the fill style gradient fill, we're going to apply that same fill effect. We'll make it 100%. And I'm actually going to choose a, a dark green outline around the button itself there so we can clearly see where the button begins and ends. I'm going to copy the appearance of that button and then paste the appearance of the button on the remaining buttons on this slide. Down here at the bottom, the submit button is on the right. I'm actually going to move it over to this fluid box and I'm also going to paste the appearance of the button on that as well. In this case, I'll center it. And I'm going to select the parent of these two fluid boxes and distribute them equally because I'm going to make a copy of the submit button and drag it into this second fluid box here. So again, we've got two very similar buttons here. This one is actually going to be my continue button. And its action will be, instead of running the knowledge check advanced action, it's simply going to go to next slide. And we'll change the caption to continue. So there's essentially two types of advanced actions on this page. There's an advanced action for each of my buttons that I've got here. And I'll show you what those look like. When we go in and take a look at Knowledge Check Select 1, you'll see that it's assigning a variable with the value of true. That means that this first answer is the true correct answer. I'm actually going to change that to be false. I'm going to update the action, click OK click close. I'm going to select the last answer, which I haven't updated them yet, but this will be my correct answer in this case. So we're going to change this to the literal value true. And that's how you change the right answer to a wrong answer and a wrong answer to the right answer. So I'm going to paste in my answers here. And let's make sure that we label our submit button as the submit button. And the same thing for the continue button. But with the continue button, I'm going to set it to not be visible in output. Let's select the submit button and take a look at the advanced action for that knowledge check here. So in this case here, we're checking to see if sales knowledge check correct is equal to true. If it is, then we're going to change the state of these two objects over here to the correct state. But I also want to do something else. I'm going to modify this advanced action to show my continue button and hide my submit button. So I'm going to update that action, click OK and click close. So on slide number four, I just need to update some of the content that's here. First of all, we're going to call this the Adoption Center. Next, I'm going to put the instructions in here. Now, this is going to be a multi-state object. So I'm going to go ahead and click on State View. And because there are a total of six dogs that are currently available for adoption, I'm going to add six additional states to this multi-state object. Each state will be named for one of the dogs available, and I'll replace the text with a description of the dog in question. Once I have a description of all of the dogs, I can now exit the multi-state object. If I select the parent fluid box for this particular slide, you'll see that this background image of the office environment is available. I'm going to change that to a solid fill and make it completely transparent. I'm going to select the first level child fluid box here at the top 
and I'm going to change that to an image that I have in mind for this particular slide. I'm going to select image fill, I'm going to click on the fill icon, and we're going to click on the folder icon and then import in the image that I have in mind. I am going to change this particular style to stretch so that it fills the entire width. Next, I'm going to select the upper right fluid box and we're going to go and insert an image of our first dog, Akira. Let's click on state view. We're going to need to make this into a multi-state object. The normal state will be completely transparent. So what I'm going to do is edit this image and then drop the alpha channel all the way down to zero and click OK. I'm going to duplicate this state and call the new state Akira and click OK. And in this case, I'm going to edit that image and bring the alpha channel all the way back to 100. So now we have our first selection available. The next dog is named Goldie. And then if I right click on the image of Akira, I can replace the image and then import in the next image. Here's Goldie. And I can repeat this process till I have all of the dogs in place. So now I have an image of all six dogs in this multi-state object. I can now exit the state view. I'm going to make sure that this is properly labeled. We'll call this images of dogs. And we're also going to do the same thing for the description. We'll call it descriptions of dogs. I'm going to delete these topic names down below because I'm going to replace them with alternative objects to represent the names of all the dogs in question. I'm going to return to my previous slide and get a copy of my continue button. And we're going to actually paste a copy of the continue button in this top left fluid box. I'm going to change the caption to read select and I'm going to resize this these objects up top here. I think I'll make the select button a little smaller. And I'm going to duplicate that item and bring it down to one of these lower fluid boxes. In this case, I'm going to uncheck use as button and we'll call this Akira. I'll make another copy and we'll call it Goldie, Sheba, Max, Scooby, and Lucy. I also added a little padding around each of these fluid boxes so it was clear to the user that they were separate from one another. Also, I'm going to make sure that all of these are visible in output and I'm going to label these objects so that we know exactly which dog is for which shape. So now what we need to do is to create a drag and drop. Normally I'd recommend using the drag and drop wizard but in this case, because there's going to be no third step of selecting the correct answer, I'm actually going to use the window drop down and select drag and drop. We'll start by clicking the plus icon to create a new drag and drop interaction. This will create a submit button, which I'm just going to move down into the lower scrap area. Next, I'm going to select my drop target and click on the drag and drop panel and make sure that it's identified as a drop target. And one by one, I'm going to select each of the dog's names and identify those as drag sources. For my drop target, I'm going to change the size to zero and the opacity to zero and change the position to absolute. What we now want to do is to create some actions associated with dragging each of these objects into the drop target. First, we're going to need to create a variable to keep track of which object has been selected. So we're going to select the project drop down menu and select variables. So I'm going to click on add new and we're going to call this underscore dog underscore selected. Click Save 
and we can click close. Now I want to use a shared action for this particular situation, but before you create a shared action, you need to create an advanced action. So I'm going to click on project again and select advanced actions. I'm going to call this select underscore dog. And the first thing we're going to do is assign dog selected with a literal value of one of the dog's names. I'll use Akira in this case. Next, we're going to change the state of our descriptions of dogs to the appropriate dog selected. And we're going to change the images of dogs again to the appropriate dog selected. And this is our advanced action here. So I can save this as an action, but now I'm going to save it as a shared action. And there's a couple of things that we need to do. We need to provide descriptions of all of these parameters that have exclamation marks next to them. So in this case here, this will be called the description object, the state for the dog, selected images of dogs and again the state for the dog selected now i'm actually going to need to include the value of the variable that we've set up here i don't need to include the variable as part of the shared action but i definitely need to include what we're setting the value to so i'm just going to call this name of dog selected. So I can now save this as a shared action, click OK, and click Close. So now what we want to do is click on our object actions, and we're going to change the way this drag and drop works a little bit. We're going to uncheck Accept All, and we're going to choose Replace, making sure to keep the count at 1. So in this case here, we're going to apply our shared action to each of the possible dogs that could be dragged over. So I'm going to double click on no action and change that to execute shared action. Click on the parameters icon. And in this case here, we're starting off with Akira. So the description object is the description of dogs. The images of dogs is the images of dogs. And the state that we're selecting is Akira for both. Let's save that click OK, and now we need to repeat this process for the five remaining dogs. OK, so now our last one is Lucy. So we'll execute shared actions, hit the parameters icon, we'll type in Lucy's name, again identify the descriptions and the images of dogs, and make sure that the state for both of those is Lucy. We'll click Save, OK. Now we have all of our shared actions set up. Click OK, and now we're good to continue. So before I leave slide number four, I'm actually going to copy the multi-state object of the images of dogs, because we're going to use that on the following slide. And then we're going to go to slide number five, and I'm going to paste that directly into the left of these two fluid boxes. Next, I'm going to delete the title for this slide. And now I'll hit delete again to delete the placeholder. And from here, I'm going to paste some text that I've already set up. And I'm going to select all the text in the subtitle and paste in some text I've selected from a, another document here. And we're going to make one small change to this here. You see how I've got great choice, you've selected, and then blank. What we're going to do is select that spot within the text Remember that user variable we created to keep track of the name of the dog? Well, we're going to input that directly into this caption here. So I'm going to select that user variable, dog selected. Uh, we'll click OK, and that will show up now here as well. Now let's uh, make sure this slide looks like it belongs in this particular project. So now I'm going to select the left fluid box, and we're going to bring in the image that we used on the previous slide. Click OK. And I'm just going to make sure that that's set up to stretch within the fluid box as necessary. 
and we're going to select the fluid box to the right here and we're going to change that from image fill to gradient fill and select our green gradient that we've been using all along. The one thing we need to do is to make sure that we have an on enter advanced action. So we're going to select the on enter action of the slide itself and execute advanced actions. We're going to create a new advanced action by clicking the plus icon within advanced action and we'll call this one final slide. Now this will be a conditional action and we're going to check the value of our variable dog selected. So we're going to say if variable dog selected is equal to the literal value of Akira, for example, we're going to change the state of, and remember we made a copy of images of dogs, in this case it showed up as underscore two, and we'll just change that to Akira. So I'm going to relabel this tab Akira, and what I can do now is duplicate this structure that you see here for each of the dogs that are available for adoption. And all we'll need to do is make a couple of small changes to each one to make sure that it works for each situation here. So we're going to do Scooby next. And we'll repeat this until we have all of the dogs that are available to adopt. So there we go. Now I just save this as an action. Click OK. Click Close. And we make sure that our on enter advanced action is pointing at the final slide advanced action. Let's preview our project and make sure everything works according to plan. Let's preview the project and see how it works. So here's our welcome slide and our click to reveal. And of course our knowledge check. And now of course we can select the dog of our dreams and our final slide letting us know that we've selected Lucy and instructions on how to proceed. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.